Here's what I said a month ago about what would be the decisive factor in these elections. At this stage, it is not about persuasion. It is about setting the agenda and turning out the vote. It's too late to persuade people you're tough on crime if they think you're soft on crime. It's too late to persuade them your policy is reasonable if they already think it's extreme. What you can do is influence the agenda, what is front of mind for voters as they make their choice. We know what the Democrats wanted to be front of mind for the voters. We saw it in the debates this week. I believe abortion rights is a, a universal right. He helped him on January 6th by supporting it with the overturn of an, turning of an election. I don't want to ban abortion. I want to make sure we keep a woman's right to choose available to the women of the state of Florida. We lose everything. And we got very close to that on January 6th. Abortion, January the 6th, abortion, January the 6th. That's what this election is about. Screen the Democrats, echoed by their media servants. Abortion, insurrection, abortion, insurrection, insurrection, abortion, insubordination, whatever. Just shut up and ignore the complete mess we've made of the country. Well, how's that strategy going? Not so great. Here are the issues voters say are actually top of their minds as they vote this year. Inflation, crime, gas prices, the economy, the border. Abortion, in a recent Gallup poll, it's at 4%. Nice job, Democrats. So now, we're told, they are desperately scrambling to cobble together some last-minute message on the economy and healthcare, and shuffling money around like panicky losers at the casino. The New York Times now reporting that reality is setting in as the Democrats are forced to play defense in deep blue territory like California and Rhode Island. And, of course, New York, where Lee Zeldin is giving Democrats the Halloween fright of their lives. Now, I just want you to savour this in another New York Times report. Democrats mounting a frenzied push, pouring millions of dollars into last-minute ads, a whirlwind of campaign rallies to energise their base. Labour unions have gone into overdrive. An emergency, all-hands-on-deck meeting. Yep, they're worried, as Jen Psaki helpfully confirmed. People are fearful about uh, where the momentum is going in some of these races. Democrats are kind of worried about where this is going right now, and it's felt worse over the last week or so. And honestly, perhaps the single strongest signal that they know they're going to lose, the ultimate swamp creature, the man who'll do anything for a job that lets him fly around the world on private jets paid for by you. Yes, John Kerry. The horse-faced liability himself is now apparently windsurfing towards the exit. It was reported this week that he's preparing to leave the Biden administration because, quote, he doesn't relish being hauled before a Republican-controlled Senate or House, and he's interested in returning to the private sector to increase his own net worth. But what an idiot! Democrats don't need to return to the private sector to increase their net worth. They do that when they're in the government. Meanwhile, just like the hapless Selena Meyer in an old episode of Veep, Vice President Kamala Harris was kept out of the loop on the new midterm message, and this week was still flogging the issue that her party's bosses had dumped. Laws that are being proposed that would punish women who dare to exercise self-determination and make decisions about what they know to be in their best self-interest. How dare they? I think that we need to take back the flag on this issue. Mm. What? Someone get her the memo. Abortion didn't work. Talk about the economy. Who doesn't love a yellow school bus, right? Can you raise your hand if you love a yellow school bus, right? Just, there's something about the, and, and most of us, many of us went to school on the yellow school bus, right? Yeah, okay. Maybe stick to abortion after all. In a new ad, Obama was still on the old script too, although to be fair, he probably had to film it a few weeks ago before jetting off to kite surf with Richard Branson or something. So when the fate of our democracy and a woman's right to choose are on the line. Oh, for goodness sake, the fate of our democracy. Don't they see how preposterous it all sounds? What about this one? Do we want to continue being a constitutional democracy? Only one way to preserve our 246-year experiment in self-rule. Vote blue. I know, I know, it's Rob Reiner. But actually, it's not just Rob Reiner. It's all of them. They really believe this hysterical nonsense. Just turn on MSNBC or CNN or NPR. This is how they talk all the time. And actually, this is why they're losing. 
because however much they go on about our democracy, well, let's not forget, doing as much as anyone to undermine it with their ceaseless gerrymandering and election denying and constitution defying and assaults on free speech, but whatever, their endless lectures on democracy can't wipe away the reality of their record. There's no message that can make you ignore gas prices doubling, your grocery bill doubling, heating costs doubling, and now mortgage rates doubling because now it's not just their inflation, it's the response to inflation, higher interest rates. The average mortgage payment has gone up by $1,000 a month in the last year. Does Biden really think he's going to overcome that with his pathetic, what was it, mega maga jibber jabber? Do Democrats really think they're not going to get the blame when you have James Clyburn, the guy who landed us with Biden in the first place, now admitting not just that their policies caused the economic carnage, but they knew in advance and did it anyway? And all of us knew this would be the case uh, when we put in place this recovery program. Anytime you put more money uh, into uh, the economy, uh, prices uh, tend to rise. You can't message your way out of the actual reality of the economy. You can't message your way out of the actual reality of crime. You have people who are afraid of being pushed in front of oncoming subway cars. They're being stabbed, beaten to death on the street with hammers. We're at, what are we, halfway through the debate? She still hasn't talked about locking up anyone committing any crimes. I don't know why that's so important to you. Oh, I don't know why it's so important to you. Lock up violent criminals, she says. What are you, crazy? Lock up violent criminals? If we did that, how would they commit their crimes? They've completely lost the plot, these Democrats. That's why these debates, the few they agreed to have, have proved such a total disaster for them. Never mind poor John Fetterman's performance. Just look at the substance. Uh, I, I, I do support fracking, and I don't, I don't, I support fracking, and I stand, and I do support fracking. Right there, the humiliating flip-flop on fracking. Why? Because they know that their energy policy, their war on American energy, declared on day one of the Biden presidency, has been a complete disaster for energy security, for inflation, for jobs, a disaster. And now they're desperately trying to distance themselves, just as Biden desperately begs for oil from some, from some of the worst regimes on the planet. It's all a disaster. Every issue, the economy, crime, the border, Afghanistan, supply chain, baby formula, for goodness sake. Name one thing that's gone well. They can't claim the pandemic ending. It was Trump who got the vaccines. They brag about the bills they've passed. But passing legislation isn't in itself an accomplishment. It's what the legislation does. Their legislation fueled inflation. They claim unemployment is low. But as we've shown you many times, labor participation is the lowest since 1977, apart from the pandemic shutdown. Even Chuck Todd explained it the other week. There are 2.6 million fewer people working than the level with Trump just before the pandemic. On absolutely everything, it's been a total downhill so far and so fast. It's genuinely astonishing how much damage they've done in two years. These adults back in the room with their smug lectures about good governance. This is why they're losing. This is why their panicked pivot to some other last minute message won't make the slightest difference. They've failed on an epic scale, and they're going to be punished for it. So please follow us on the new free Twitter at NextRevFNC and at Steve Hilton X and share this message when we post it later. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.